LSU won the toss and deferred the option. So Auburn will get the ball. Josh Jasper will kick off. DeMond Washington and Ontario Cape, uh, Michaela Barton deep. See, uh, touchback's not uh, a strong point for LSU. No, and this is into the wind, too. It'll be tough to get it back there. Very short. Taken at the 11-yard line. Up the middle with an opening. That's DeMond Washington, number 14. And Gary, how about Cam Newton? We talked a little bit just a moment ago. Statistically, just a marvelous effort. Well, yeah, he's almost impossible to defend because he not only can run and he's big, he's hard to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. And I think the key for LSU in this game is to not go for the knockout blow on him. Okay, there's a lot of space out there. Just tackle him soundly and bring him down. Don't try to hurt the guy, just grab him. First down from the 37 yard line. Slips the ball to Michael Dyer, who did get the start today, battling a bone bruise or a bad uh, bad knee. And here is the Chick fil A starting lineup Zimba, Barry, Pugh, Isom, and Mosley, the front line. Very good one. Well, we were told a half an hour ago that Fannin would be the starter. He was not. So deception all around. Catch is made by Mario Fannin, who comes in for the second down play. Now, defensively for LSU, just an outstanding unit. Adams, Levingston, Nevis, and LeVar Edwards gets the start at defensive end. Francois, Kelvin Shepard, Ryan Baker are the linebackers. The secondary, Claiborne, Taylor, Hatcher, and the All-American, Peterson. That one is down at the 46-yard line. Ryan Baker with the tackle, fourth and one. And something we've not seen much of, three and out for the Auburn Tigers. And, and right away, you saw the signature of this LSU defense, speed. The speed coming off the edge. That brings on the freshman, Stephen Clark, third game in which he has punted. He replaced Ryan Shoemaker. And the All-American, Patrick Peterson, has two touchdowns on punt returns this year. This one high. Fair catch called by Peterson. He makes the grab at the 11-yard line. 32-yard punt, but most significantly, nothing on the return. We will see both men. Jordan Jefferson, the starter on the left. Jarrett Lee, who was the starter in 08 on the right. They've used both for the last three or four games. Obviously, effectively, because they've won. But Jordan Jefferson's stats as a passer this year are abysmal. First and 10. He'll throw on first down. Sounds like he was listening. Catch made by Reuben Randall off the arm of Jefferson and said, uh, take that. Offensive lineup, Barksdale, DeRossick, Lonergan, T-Bob Bear, and Hurst. Tolliver, the most effective wide receiver, Stampley, the fullback, Ridley, Peterson, and Shepard. Here's Les Miles. Second and short. Jefferson, that's a first down LSU. Defensively for the Tigers of Auburn, Carter, Clayton, Fairley's having a great year. Nosa Igwe, Stevens, Bynes, and Bates are the linebackers. Here's the problem spot. They have given up huge chunks of yardage. Washington, Etheridge, McNeil gets a start for the injured Aaron Savage. First down, 10. Ridley. Out to the 28-yard line. Tackle made by Zach Etheridge with help from Devin Bates. Watching tape of LSU as they're going to go hurry up here. They're going to try to do the same thing that they, Auburn does to them. On second and seven, quick flip out. 
The block is given, and Russell Shepard, number 10, makes the catch. Well, Jordan Jefferson threw two touchdowns in the first game of the year against North Carolina. He hasn't thrown one since. Well, the key thing about Jordan is he's not producing touchdowns on possessions. His last 18 possessions, he has one touchdown and 17 straight without a touchdown. Third and one. Standard eye gives the fullback. Looks like he got enough to move the chain. That was Spencer Ware, number 16, who will line up both as a tailback and a fullback. Now he uh, gets a spell on first down 10. I watched a lot of tape at LSU, and you first get mesmerized by their skill on defense. Then you eyes turn to their offensive line. Vern, it's a much more physical offensive line than I've seen in a few years at LSU. They are starting to knock people off the line of scrimmage. Jefferson pulls it. Runner pass option. And this is what he does best. He uh, he can hurt you with his running style. That's one of the things that I've watched uh, Jordan through his career. At first, people were trying to tell me he's a great option quarterback like a Ryan Paralu. I never really saw that. I think he's a better downhill runner as a quarterback. Much more effective maybe in the Wildcat or on broken plays right there. I don't think he's a great option quarterback. Big game then on nine yards at second down and one. Michael Ford, number 42, the freshman. Here's the option. Jefferson pitches at the last minute, and Ford just does get around the corner before Nico Thorpe makes the tackle. But Michael Ford had a big day last week in the win over McNeese State. They've been waiting for a breakout game from him, and he had 88 yards in that game. Well, time of possession, I think, against Auburn is more important than any team you'll play this year in the SEC. LSU dominated Florida in time of possession, and that was a key to that football game. First down 10, this drive began following the punt. Just to highlight that, Vern, against Florida, I don't really count the McNeese State game. I don't okay. know the stats, I, you know, I, I mean, I, all right. I he understand. had 12 drives against Florida. Six of them were seven plays or longer. Now, here we go again. First drive, seven plays already. That is their formula against this Dead Auburn ball. team. Offside, 94 defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Tom Ritter is our referee today, and the call was against Nosa Igwe. First down five. Jefferson in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Terrence Tolliver. Uh-oh. Second down. Pretty surprised he didn't get 15 added to that backwards. Vern, that was a poor pass, okay? You got a receiver running full speed in one direction. On a short pass, he has to turn and adjust. Short passes must be accurate. The Joe Montana theory of throwing the ball. Watch this ball behind. See, he has no time to react to it. That sets up a second down and five. The Rossick was in the shoving match. Quick setup, slant pattern, Randall. Nailed, third down. Demond Washington was there. He was, and he made a good stop. It was not a well-thrown ball again. It was led too far upfield. Watch the receiver. You don't know for quite get it. Good catch, good hit, but I really believe it's four down territory right here. They'll call this play knowing they can still make it on fourth down. Third and one. Could they go deep? Toss. Ridley first down. Nice surge on that right side. Josh Bynes makes the tackle, but Stephen Ridley, who leads this team in rushing, picks up the first down there. Well, Auburn came into this game saying, our defensive front four needs to help us win this football game. So far, the LHU offense has kept them off balance, and you can almost feel the clock ticking here, like the secondary guys are going, they're going to come after us. I know they're going to come after us. 
four first downs on this drive. Three wides to the left. Blitz threatened by the Auburn Tigers and time taken yeah. as the play clock winds down to two. We talked about this last week. These are the toughest play clocks in all of college football, or well, at least the SEC. They're very, very low, and Jordan never found them. Well, these two teams, rivals in the SEC West, they've met annually since the expansion in the conference. You can see they've split that series nine and nine. The home team has won nine of the last ten. And how about this? The last three meetings, if you add up the scores and accumulate, it's 38-38. You remember that uh, there was a stat, Georgia and Auburn, through like 100 right, years? Right, right, And it was never more than a <laughs> touchdown difference. I think that's changed now. But first down and ten. This is the... 11th play of the drive. Auburn threatening a blitz again. Three wides to the left. Now they rotate. Play clock at three. Jefferson. Deep left side. Nico Thorpe had a chance to intercept and could not hang on. Can't read one worse than that. You just nope. can't read one worse than that. Your number one responsibility as a quarterback when you're throwing the flag is to make sure you find the outside guy in the outside one-third. Now watch this. The slot's going to go to the one-third right to the guy. Nico Thorpe should have ate up that football for an interception. Yeah. Nico Thorpe didn't have a great afternoon a week ago against Arkansas, and that was a should have had. Jefferson keeps it. Tackled by the ankle, Josh Bynes, a middle linebacker, who was bemoaning the tackling effort by his team in the last uh, two games prior to last week. You are right. He's uh, He plays every down. He had two big interceptions to end the game. But that tackle right there is what he was saying. We got to tackle better. Doesn't matter what defense our coach puts us in. If we don't tackle, it isn't going to work. Third and eight. All day wide open, intercepted, picked off by Zach Etheridge on the deflection. Down the sidelines, it's Auburn football. The key word, wide open. And Jordan, I'm not picking on you, but at this level of football, if you want to beat an undefeated team and be champions in this league, you got to make that throw. I mean, it, that would have been, it could have been a catch, sure. but that's a poor throw. Ruben Randall, the intended receiver, Etheridge, 41 yard return. Well, LSU's defense did what they wanted to do as we look at Jordan Jefferson with a couple, one bad decision, one bad throw. They had a three and out in the last 70 possessions, now counting McNeese State. They've had 26, so that's 27. Here's Newton. Pulls it down. Oh, he's in trouble. But that doesn't last long. Well, he's off to a quick romp around the left side. That should be enough for the first down. This time it was Kendrick Adams. Number 94, who missed him? Kendrick Adams comes in, clean shot. The guy in blue is better than the guy in white on that one. I talked to a couple defensive coordinators around the country this week, Vern, about defending this spread and specifically a really talented quarterback like this. And almost unanimously they said they spend more time talking about rush lanes than they do about pass coverage. It's really important to corral in that pocket and not let those guys break you down by coming in too hard at them. Well, you see the graphic about his uh, cumulative yards in the ground. He has four games already this season in excess of 170 yards rushing at 188 last week. Option reverse around the left side. This is Terrell Zachary, number 81. Carnell Hatcher got him, gain of 12. 
I thought Ryan Baker, number 22, had a chance to get him. But let's see what happens over here. He's the man that was supposed to defend the reverse. Who gets him? I think it's Lee Zimba. Lee Zimba's the guy that gets him, and Ryan Baker gets up and goes, wait a second, the guy's six foot eight, and you let him block me from behind, too? Now you can see they go quick, Gus Malzahn's offense. And uh, so now Newton has the play signaled in. Flips it out behind Lutzenkirchen, but the H back, that wasn't a great pass, but he gets back and makes the catch. Philip Lutzenkirchen takes longer to pronounce his name than it takes for Auburn to run a play. <laughs> well, I really believe this football game, we're going to see more of Cam's ability to throw the ball. And right now, Jordan Jefferson's going, why can't you guys catch one like that for me? <laughs> Up the middle. Uh -oh. Down at the 15-yard line. Ryan Baker with the tackle. This is just power football. There's three major plays that Auburn runs out of this spread. Quarterback power, quarterback counter, and the zone read. And that time, it was the quarterback power. Handoff left side. This is Michael Dyer. Fifteen yards to the one. I really like this Michael Dyer. I really think he's going to be a star in this league. Built very low to the ground. Big, strong legs. He runs right through Patrick Peterson here and gets another seven yards on the play. Dyer bothered by that, uh, that knee last week, but he did have a touchdown run out of Little Rock Christian Academy where he gained over 8,000 yards. And he doesn't have any wrap on that knee like last week. Here's Newton. Why not? No. Touchdown. Now, he was straightened up that time. He was. That was not a Jericho Nelson play that we saw last week when Newton had a uh, touchdown run and a pancake block on the same play. Signal is touchdown. Brandon Taylor right there. Yeah, he ran right through. Those guys, those safeties are not going to be able to stop a 250-pound fullback. I mean, we saw it for four years from Tebow. Now, you know, we thought that was once-in-a-generation player. It's like every year. <laughs> One year went by. <laughs> Six plays, 54 yards. Touchdown, Wes Byram with the extra point. Well, this drive began with a deflected pass and an interception. Jefferson throwing deep for Randall right into the hands of Zach Etheridge. He returned it 41 yards, and Cam Newton got the score. Auburn by seven. Cam Newton, another touchdown. He's responsible for 26. Look who he shares the record with now, Pat Sullivan. All the way back in 1970, and that was the year before Pat Sullivan won the Heisman. I, I would, it's eight games, right? And already, I never really thought I heard this, there's already little whispers that there may be a new greatest Auburn player ever, ever. Did anybody ever think that would happen with Bo Jackson playing here? No. And I'm already hearing the whispers. He may be the greatest Auburn player ever. I hope he gets through one season before they announce Yeah, that, that. you know, <laughs> Bo Jackson had a pretty decent career yep. here. Wes Byron will kick off. Peterson comes up, grabs it at the 12. Gets around the corner. Oh dear. A little collision in the bench area. Well, Auburn yielded a bunch in the first series. Last week's secondary was the review was they didn't tackle well. They didn't play the ball when it was in the air. They didn't break on it when it was thrown. Too big of cushions, and they didn't line up well. So far, they're doing much better in this football game. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, former head coach at Duke. 
First down. Jefferson, we expect him to go the first two series and then to see Jarrett Lee, Les Miles telling us last night, Gary Croton rather, that that's what the intent was. And here's Jefferson spilled as he gets across the 32. Well, if you're Ted Roof last week, and we had fun with him yesterday, right. you can you can laugh when you win 65-43, but look at these uh, points that they gave up in the yards last week. Well, this is a better matchup for Ted this week. Arkansas throws it as sophisticatedly as there anybody in college ball. But for me, if I'm LSU, I'd run downhill and throw. I, I don't know about all this other stuff. I mean, they seem to be able to block running downhill just like that. And why not attack their weakness in the secondary? I don't, I don't know if I'm buying all this other stuff. That was Stephen Ridley, and he picks up the first down. You know, Ridley, they say, is not a home run maker, right, Vern? But right. Uh, so what? You know, I yeah. mean, what's wrong with first downs? That ain't, that ain't too bad. Russell Shepard coming near side. He was the high school quarterback phenom out of Houston and uh, was switched to a wide receiver last year. Chris Davis, number 11, makes the tackle. We were told last night we can expect to see a lot more of Russell Shepard in this game. He's more of a factor when Jordan Jefferson is right. in the game. They kind of match those two together. Now an I formation. Ridley is the deep back behind Stampley. Moves the chain again inside the 45. All right, Tim, thank you. You see Oklahoma State, lowest ranked undefeated team. Motion flags. Tom Ritter is our referee today. Dead ball, offside, defense, five yard penalty, first down. I kind of thought I saw the quarterback kind of pucker or break his knees on the play here. Let's see what happened with Jordan Jefferson on the play. Yeah, see, I thought uh -huh. he draw the, drew the defense off. It's almost as if he forgot the snap count. That could have been, usually that's called on the quarterback. First down five, second offside we've had called. Jefferson cuts it up as he gets to the right corner and is tackled. He's got a first down again at the 30-yard line. Zach Etheridge makes the stop, number four. Well, my criticism of Jordan not being a great option quarterback on this, in this case, he did it exactly the way he should have. Cut back hard and strong. Good block from T-Bob Aver there. Number 53, whose son Bobby, of course, was a longtime quarterback with the Saints. Pretty good success so far from the LSU offense. How does LSU kind of coach around their quarterbacks right now. That's that's kind of where it is. Mm -hmm. if, if they get good play out of 9 and 12, it looks like they can move the ball. Slip the ball left side. This is Ridley again, number 34. And Josh Bynes makes another tackle, number 17. Latter stages opening quarter. Interception, the big play of this uh, ball game. Zach Etheridge picked it off on a deflection, returned it 41 yards. After that, Auburn went 54 yards for a touchdown. Last time on third down, interception, bad throw by the quarterback. What do you do now if you're LSU? Timeout called by Auburn. On third down and eight. Two minutes, 37 seconds left in the opening quarter. Auburn leads by seven. The touchdown set up on a 41-yard interception return by number four, Zach Etheridge. 
And for more on Etheridge and the secondary, let's go down to Tracy Wolfs. Well, guys, during all the excitement in the fourth quarter last week versus Arkansas, there was extreme sadness on the Auburn sideline when senior safety Aaron Savage suffered a broken ankle. He had surgery this week and will rehab in hopes of making the bowl game. Fellow senior safety Zach Etheridge said they've texted all week, and he's in good spirits. It said his main concern was finding a leader to step up in his place. Etheridge assured him he would be the guy, and so far he's proving it. Vern. All right, Tracy, thank you. That was his second interception of the season. Right now, LSU threatening third down eight, and they are at the 28. Three wides to the left, one split wide right. Auburn with three down linemen defensively. Got him! There's a play. There's a flag. Yep. No play. There was no play. Flag on the near side. Dead ball, false start, 78 offense, five yard penalty, third down. Well, that turns out to be a, a positive of sorts for LSU. You know, here's what happened also on that one. The linesman whistled the play dead, but I don't think the referee heard it. So they let a free shot go on a quarterback right there. That's when the officials really need to get together to protect the defenseless guy. He got driven in the ground. It was Nick Fairley who got to Jefferson. Third and 13. Two receivers wide right, two wide left. Actually, there are three down there. Time out again. Time out. This time, I think, by LSU. Yes. Play clock about to expire. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> clock management problems. <laughs> Where have we heard that before? But, but this time it was handled by the coach well on the sidelines. You can see at the top of the screen, right by the third down marker, Les saw the clock running down and called the timeout. Well, Jefferson on that uh, dead ball play. Nick Fairley got him. Time has been called. We're back in uh, Auburn. Gary, you mentioned the problems in seeing uh, the play clock. It's twofold. It's actually three. It's low. There's a lot of yellow around the clock, and the sun's directly behind him. A bad reflection. Very tough to pick up. That one was probably a good call by Les to get out of that play. Third and 13. Jefferson caught and dropped at the 31. Fourth down. Mike Blanc, number 93, got there. Now, this is very interesting. This is into the wind, and this is right on the edge of being able to kick this one for a field goal. I think that's why LSU ran. They tried to get five or six yards to get the three points. Let's see how close. Josh Jasper's season long is 51. He's had a good year. He's 13 of 16. But on fourth and 11, he's got to kick this one into the wind from 48 yards. Josh Jasper. Derek Hilton is the holder. The punter. Oh, that's got plenty of distance. Nailed it. Beautiful. Jasper from 48. He can do more than run. This is kicker for LSU. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my goodness. 7-3. Les Miles. Quite appreciative of that. 7-3 here. Tigers lead the Tigers. In this case, the edge held by Auburn with 1.47 to go. This will be their third possession. They were three and out in the opener and then went 54 for the touchdown. Cam Newton got it from a yard out. That's about right. About 12 or 13 drives is a normal game when LSU plays sound defense. 
Jasper will kick off. Washington and Michaela are the deep men. McCaleb grabs this one a yard in. He had a 99 yard return last week. And he's got a chance for another big one. But he is cut down out to the 33 yard line by Jai Eugene, number four. I tell you, you got to give it to Ontario McCaleb. Ontario goes about 165 pounds wet. I mean, this guy running kickoffs back like this, that takes courage, and he's done it and showed what an excellent kickoff return man he is. Watch Jai Eugene. At the end of this play, he goes over and he does a chest bump with Trooper Taylor, the receiver's coach. Who probably recruited him. I, I'm sure that's the case. Right. Absolutely. That was amazing. Here's a quick trip out to the left side. Terrell Zachary. Now watch Jai Eugene. He's been a very important player for LSU. And Trooper Taylor, who's one of the great recruiters, is that any good? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of respect from these two teams. I mean, they have fought it out year after year. And I tell you, when they play here, they are close games. I don't want to be a curmudgeon here, but that's probably an NCAA no. violation. <laughs> We're going to let that one slide. No, I hope so. First down and 10. Up the middle, Newton. So I'm wrong. I said they'd start 7-0. I should have said 8-0. Well, boy, they had a tussle. Here's a play fake at Newton looking deep. Double coverage, but there's the bar. It's tipped away. What it was a hand on it. It looked like Brandon Taylor was back, intended for Quindarius Carr, and Peterson was also defending. One thing we know about Gus Malzahn is he likes to go deep and take five or six shots downfield. Brandon Taylor, excellent job of keeping his eyes on the football and reaching out with his left hand. Left hand, that is a wonderful job by Brandon Taylor. Sets up a third down. See Calvin Shepard, he's the guy calling all the adjustments. All SEC middle linebacker came into this game leading his team in tackles with 66. 20 more than the second best. Now he drops in coverage across the middle. And that's a Shepard went deep and they went right underneath it. And Terrell Zachary, number 81, appears to have picked up a first down. Appears. Let's see if they need to measure or not. Coming nope. right across the middle. You know what I like about Cam Newton's throwing is he's obviously got a strong arm, but he's learned to add the touch on the short ones. You got to just throw those. It's like the coach used to tell me, you know, throw an egg on those short ones. Like, just toss them an egg. So that nothing smashes into their hands like that. Well, a year ago, Cam Newton was leading Gwynn Junior College for the JC National Championship. Here's the ball to the right side. It goes to Ontario McCaleb. Final 10 seconds. Cam Newton has started, of course, at Florida. Redshirted his sophomore year, then decided to transfer when Tim Tebow came back for his small season. Glenn misses him. They're five and two this year. They've got a game with Kilgore Junior College this afternoon. I don't think Cam Newton is thinking about that game right now. That's the end of the first quarter with a score seven three. We'll return to Jordan Hare right after this message and a word from your local station. I haven't done show and tell since I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> Let me help we're going to try this. Auburn Media Guide for this year. Okay, just at random. Here's a page devoted to Josh Harris, deep snapper, three colors. And then go back here under Tiger Newcomers. This is the amount of information <laughs> devoted to Cameron Newton, quarterback, 6'6", 250, from junior college. If he wins the Heisman, this is a keepsake. Yeah, that's, this will, and this picture will be right here next year, won't it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, he's had a very effective first quarter, Gary. And, and you know what they said about him, too, Vern, is he came in humble and earned everybody's respect. Now, Vern, is that, did you just channel back to your bowling for dollars day? Oh. Did you have that kind of stuff back then? Oh, that's. You had to give away stuff then back then. Oh, that's really terrible. <laughs> <you>. No. <laughs> that's fun. Well, it happened again yesterday, didn't it? Yes, it did. It's the show that will not die. Somebody, Curtis Looper, the running back coach. Well, how about. Cam Newton for Heisman? No, that's not important. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
Newton out of College Park, Georgia. Was recruited by Auburn, but turned it down. Went to Florida instead. Quick snap here. Third and one. There's Kelvin Shepard looking over at the uh, sideline. Whoa! Yeah, that, that Drake Nevis was guessing on that. I don't think it was Drake Nevis. I'm Levington. sorry. Levingston. Yep. Thought it was 92, it was 95, but he was guessing the snap count, and he guessed wrong. Good explosion. You just got to wait for the ball. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Think about the pressure, though, when you're on defense in third down. Cam Newton, for the year, has run the ball on third down 22 times and made it 16. 16 conversions. at 70, like three out of four times, he's going to make the first down. That's why that hair trigger for LSU was right there. Now they hurry up, see if they go with a quick snap. They do. Newton back to throw. He's going deep, and it's incomplete. Intended for Darvin Adams, number 89, and Teron Matthew, number 14, was there to knock it away. Well, take a look at this. The single season rush list for quarterbacks. All-time record set by Jimmy Seidel of Auburn in 63, but uh, next in sight, Tim Tebow. Here's a quick flip out left side. Inside the 30, it's going to set up a third down. That's Terrell Zachary who's been very, very busy in this first half of play. Again, you could see the speed in the LSU defense. Kelvin Shepard got out there on the play and did not give the receiver a two-way go. That jumps out at you when you're watching LSU play defense. Third and six. Strength against strength here. Newton dances right, cuts into his own man, and surges down near the 25. They'll mark it just short. Ron Brooks with the tackle, and the field goal try now coming from Wes Byram from 43 yards out. I talked to him on the field, Bert. He said he's sore from last week. He kicked so much. <laughs> Here's the kick, trying to get distance. Knock that home, and with that field goal, he becomes the all-time Auburn scoring leader, breaking a mark held by his predecessor and good friend, John Vaughn. Wes Byron, leading scorer in Auburn Tiger football history. 12.30 to go, first half of play. Saturday afternoon at Jordan Hare. Look how far up the field the LSU returners are on this play. They're on the 10, 12 yard line. Peterson and Ron Brooks are the deep men. Wes Byram. And this one chases Ron Brooks uh, all the way back to the goal line, through the end zone, and uh, out to the 20. Well, the first BCS standings released this week. Computers in love with the Sooners. So far. Yeah. <laughs> and you saw, and it's time now to cue the duck. Tigers and Ducks, which is the what is the only year in which the teams ranked first and second in the initial BCS standings played for the national title. So what you're trying to say is that graphic we just showed Number 12 on the kicking team, five yard penalty, re kick. Now you're trying to tee me up. <laughs> I was asked, I was asked in the preseason by a publication how I would tweak the BCS. Oh, really? Yeah, and what I said, it? well, a couple of sticks of dynamite with <laughs> it. Not a fan. Anyway, the flag 
puts the ball back to the Auburn 30. I think it's served its purpose well, personally. For, yeah, for a lot. It, it, it's now starting to outgrow it in my, my mind. I think it's been great up until about now. We may be time to add an amendment or two. I like that since it's a political season. Exactly. Twenty two plays so far for LSU and they've gotten three points in a turnover. So now the kick coming from the twenty five and if form holds now and Gary Croton the offensive coordinator sticks to his plan we should see Jared Lee uh, in place of Jordan Jefferson Jared Lee who was the, the starters a redshirt freshman two years ago uh, didn't see much action last year at all as Jefferson assumed the reins and now he and Jefferson are the two quarterbacks in this system. Here's Patrick Peterson. Nice return. So instead of a touchback, uh, they pick up uh, 15 yards on that exchange. And here comes Jared Lee for the season now. 72%, two touchdowns, one interception. Ironically, we talked about Cam Newton playing at Glenn Junior College, which is located in Brenham, Texas. That is where Jared Lee played his high school football for the Brenham Cubs. His dad was an assistant coach there, Stephen. And Jared Lee had a, had a very effective season so far. Led them to the win at Florida. Quick toss, Ruben Randall. And that's going to be a first down. Well, Jared Lee, and of course, Gary, we called several of his games when he was that redshirt freshman, had the uh, abysmal uh, record of uh, 14 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. He did. I felt bad for him that year. They yep. were coming off a national championship type season and a, a chance for it with a veteran team, and he was asked to do way too much too early. Anticipating too many throws, trying to make things happen, he looks much more calm out there now. And. Uh, from everything we have heard from everybody at LSU. He's handled his uh, length of stay there with great grace and dignity. Here's uh, the toss and the ball for the first down at the 49. Well, you know, we, we asked uh, Les Miles on the phone whether he wanted a quarterback to emerge. And he said, no, I'm, I'm comfortable for it, with it the way it is. And then I talked to Gary Croton down on the field, and he kind of kind of reiterated that. He says, you know what, in a lot of ways, Les likes it. He likes to have two quarterbacks ready, so if something happens, he can go to the other guy. First down and 10. Michael Ford is in the backfield. Well, safeties are in the box. Look at this. There is nobody deep. That's the deep safety right there. Under some pressure, catch is made out on the left side by Ruben Randall. He has been the intended target quite often here in the first half. It's a little surprising to me. I thought that Auburn, when they came in with the throwing quarterback, would have a safety way back here. But no, they're within six yards, seven yards of the football, challenging the running game of LSU. Etheridge with the tackle. Second down two. Got him. That's Richard Murphy, number 18, who uh, had such high hopes for a big, big season and has played sparing this year sparingly. Antoine Carter makes the tackle. And this was not smooth right here. So one of the problems with two quarterbacks is the ball handling's a little different. He bobbled, Jarrett Jar Lee bobbled the snap, and then it was never clean after that. Third and five. And this is usually number 80, Terrence Tolliver time. That's who they go to on third down. He's to the right side. Here's Lee looking left. Underneath pass. It's caught by Tolliver. That's who they throw to. Gene Chizik told us that's who they go to on third down. Ted Roof told us that's who they go to on third down. Zach Etheridge told us that's who they go to on third down. They were all right. First down. Uh oh. Russell Shepard. Looked like a uh, steer wrestling contest out there. And DeMond Washington did a nice job that time yep. fighting off a block and making the tackle at the same time. 
He's the field corner on this play. He fights off a block from Ruben Randall and then makes the play at the same time. Second and 11 following the loss of one. Shepard and Tolliver break and go wide to the left. Out of the gun, Jarrett Lee. Auburn brings four. Lee, nobody open left side. Now, this is not his strong point. That is, and it's dropped. Was it behind him? A little bit, but that was enough time to catch that ball. Angelo Peterson, the tight end, needs to make that play. It's, you know, second and long. This is going to get about eight yards. It was a little bit behind him. You know, just to read it, that story of less like two quarterbacks. Remember when they won the national title with Matt Flynn, Ryan Perilou played a big role in that season. So he kind of likes the change up of two quarterbacks. Randall Shepard and Peterson wide left. Ted Roof is challenging his front four to put pressure on the quarterback. Let's see if they do. There's a blitz. They got him. Nick Fairley, who's having a stellar season, leads this team in sacks, and he just picked up his sixth. Well, he challenged his front four, but he bought six guys. This guy right here has the back, and this guy has the back. Whichever one he blocks, he takes them. And then the other one comes in for the sack. Beautiful play that time. Josh Bynes gets the sack on the play. That's going to bring Derek Hilton on to punt. So they reach the 39, and Quindarius Carr is the deep man, number nine. He's at the 10-yard uh, line. Gets out of the need way. Need to catch that oh, one. You need to catch boy. that one. That's just bad. That lost your team 17 yards. Maybe 13 yards to be fair, but you need to catch it. Yep. 48-yard punt, and the ball is at the one. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot STC will continue after this word from your local station. Many times, returning punts involves decision making. Take a look at the decision by Quindarius Carr. All right, Quindarius Carr has his feet right there on the 10. You're supposed to not go backwards, but watch what happens here. The ball lands on the 16, and it costs them 15 yards on the play. Now, sometimes those demons of mistakes in the past come back. When Darius Card fumbled that punt that led to a touchdown by Mississippi State. So I don't think he showed confidence there on that punt. That ball should have been caught. First down 10 officially from the one. And Cam Newton will take it to the right side. Oh, well, he we didn't get the block. And Morris Claiborne was able to make the tackle. Uh, Newton needed one block. Ontario McCaleb, and he didn't get the block. Yeah, well, it, it would have been, you know, a nice block. He was kind of, McCaleb was looking outside, and he saw Claiborne at the last second and wasn't quick enough to get there. Again, speed on defense. It's a mm -hmm. difference out here watching LSU than Arkansas a week ago. Second down. That was a slip tackle, and uh, Newton up to the 10. Well, the Auburn Tigers began this uh, with a rarity for them this year, three and out. But then after the 41-yard interception return by Zach Etheridge, 54-yard touchdown drive. What did John Chavis, defensive coordinator, tell us? Don't tackle him high. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Too high, he ran right through it. Third down, quickly up the line scrimmage. Oh, brother, McCaleb, he got the first down. He was almost nailed for a loss. But Auburn is able to move the chain. Well, he might not have made a block, but he slipped through very nicely on this one. Yep. Now up the middle. 
that's a that's a Michael Dyer. That's is this just a matter of is, is it a scheme or just better athletes than we saw last? Oh, week? absolutely, better front four, more active by LSU, more speed at linebacker, and they also have Peterson has not made a lot of plays in this game, but it's the safety of him out here. They know he's got that guy, and they don't worry about it. Second down. The other thing that I think LSU is doing, Vern, is staying very simple. They're not giving a lot of looks to Gus Melzon before the snap. Newton back, draw play, designed all the way. And he's got a lot of room and a little bit of speed. Mike Berry, number 66, led the way. It's a gain of 29 yards. Well, it's a guessing game, and this time it was a brilliant call because up front, Mike Berry got the block, but Cam Newton takes one step back and follows his big guy, sets up the block, and then sprints into the end zone. Gus Melzahn's got about 50 of those plays that he's been running for <laughs> 10 years, and he knows where to go with them. This time, Newton keeps it and comes left. Across the 50. When I was talking about simplicity sometimes on defense, Gus is calling the place like a hurry up. He wants a hurry up play right here. He wants to quickly go on second down, especially near hash, is when they really want to go fast. And so the play signaled in. The umpire Mark, yes, he was late. That's right. Up the middle, Dyer first down over. They want to go quick again. Near hash, go quick again. Gus Melzon is going, go, 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 go. How about he said to us? Did you watch much of Oregon? He says, no, but they really go fast, don't they? <laughs> First down and 10. Dyer again, going right. It'll be second down. Now Newton is already looking over. Yeah, but this is middle of the field now. Okay. And he won't go quite as fast. He's going to make a personnel change. How about this fact, though? Usually you see there's offensive coordinators staring at their game plan. He's got help, but he says he memorizes the whole game plan and calls it from his head. Second down. Now Newton will look over, and the cards are flashed. There are three of them on the sidelines on second down. Newton looks over one more time. And snap. Fannin, Mario Fannin. Thought for a moment it was 23 instead of 27. 14-yard game. Well, three straight SEC 300-yard rushing games in a row for Auburn. And it looks like flash and dash, but it's downhill running. It's exactly what Lee Zimba told us about this offense. We're more physical than people think. Newton starts in the middle, comes left, goes back to the middle, and is tackled after a yard and a half by Michael Brockers, number 90. Get popped pretty uh, pretty well at the end of this. Dance to the outside, comes back in. Ouch! It's kind of falling down at the time that Brockers got him almost helmet to helmet. Yes, there, it was it? very close. One that you can't avoid though. This is going to be a quick snap here, or at least the linemen are going to go real quick. Look how close they are to the line of scrimmage. This is the 11th play of the drive that started on the one-yard line. Newton, they slip it up the middle, don't get anything. And uh, Cam Newton is now number two behind Jimmy Seidel. Single season rush yards. I have a feeling he might pass Seidel. Yeah. Maybe today. <laughs> Jimmy Seidel saying, well, at least I got my name in here. Yeah, that's right. Third and seven. Cam said it's his responsibility to tell the offensive line. Everybody else looks to their coach. Right. Third and seven. They'll throw. Across the middle. I'm not sure where that was intended. Yeah, he never got his feet set that time. Newton felt the pressure up front, whether it was coming or not, but I thought it was Drake Nevis that did a decent job to move Cam out of the pocket and cause the poor throw. Drake Nevis is having a big season now. Almost anointed by Glenn Dorsey. He said he's going to be the next great Defensive one, and he's having a terrific season. Here's Byram from 39 yards out. Oh, oh no. Oh. 
No. Byram. Missed badly. Les Miles, I don't like that. BCS standings, the first, uh, first of the season revealed last Sunday. Oklahoma on top, Oregon second. Boise State, and then Auburn is fourth. And there cues up the uh, answer to the trivia question. The only year in which the teams ranked one and two at the start played for the national title. 2005, Texas, Southern Cal. Pretty good football game to play with Jarrett Lee is still in at quarterback. This will be his second series. And if I'm LSU, I, I'm looking for the time when I can throw the ball downfield. Auburn has showed poor ball skills with the ball in the air. I got to challenge him a little bit. There's Russell Shepard on the quick pass out to the right flat. And they gained four. Chris Davis, number 11, makes the top of the tackle. Just as important for LSU, Vern, is that there's you know, two and a half minutes to go in the half, and they get the ball to start the next half. So they want to take clock off also. And swing pass, Shepard. Okay, With that spin, wonderful. he got the first down. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Very, very close. He might be short, though. Did his knee come down short of the line? He did. Yep. Yep. Up the middle, Richard Murphy, number 18. Well, Matt Mock wore number 18 for LSU when he was the quarterback, passed it on to Jacob Hester and Richard Dixon and Murphy is this year. It's a, it's a tradition that's less than a decade old, but quite an honor now for anybody to be voted to wear number 18. And the, the vote includes Matt Mock, yeah, uh, and Jared, Jared Lee. He's wearing Nick Fairley on this one. Yeah. Nick Fairley, number 90, was all in his jersey that time. Watch Nick come up right there and plant him. And that's when that left wrist, left elbow, when you get driven. I broke my wrist on a play very similar to this. Ouch. Otis Man. McKinney, strong safety for the Oakland Raiders. You don't forget those things. No, no, no. Well, time has been called by the officials. Jared Lee and Jefferson uh, warming up now. Nick Fairley has been a tear in the SEC. Maybe the best defensive lineman here, along with Drake Nevis, all year. Runs right through. And, and that's a that's a good play. I mean, you can't call that unnecessary roughness or anything. He had to take the quarterback down, and that is a good call and a great play by Fairley. And it was a week ago here that he sacked Ryan Mallett. Turned out that on that sack, Mallett suffered a concussion. Ryan Mallett is playing in the game today. He was cleared for further play. And now. Second down and 10, and Jefferson is on. Now, now do you call plays different? You don't want to make a mistake at your own end here. 10 3 is not a bad halftime score. Four man rush, Auburn. Jefferson, no. Oh, face mask. Look at that, three hankies. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. And now it gets very nice to throw the ball around. You're going to get close to the 50 yard line. Personal foul, foul, face mask, number 45 defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first half. Well, Ted Roof challenged his front four to put pressure on the quarterbacks, and this time Anton Carter, number 45, didn't quite have the pass rush, but as he came around, he was in position to make a tackle and inadvertently got the face mask. And that does move it across the 50. Yeah, much more comfortable play calling now for LSU. Jefferson, read option, he goes left. Out of bounds to stop the clock with the first down. Longest play of the game for LSU. Yeah, he, he absolutely, Vern, you called it the read keep by the quarterback. Watch him read over here, coming down flat fairly, coming down over there, just run it the other way, like, like, like checkers. You go here, I go there. It's not that hard. 
If you can run fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gain of 15 and a first down at the 35. Game plan could not be going any better for LSU. Close game, not high scoring. Down goes. I don't want to emulate Howard Cosell. I'm not going to do that. That's Nick Fairley with the sack. And he beat Josh Dworzak that time, number 68, pretty cleanly. And that guy is just showing you why. People say he's the most valuable defensive lineman in the SEC for the first half of the year. Drake Nevis might have been, but Fairley's just as strong. Second sack in this first half for Nick Fairley. Time called by LSU. 10-3, Auburn Jarrett Lee, injured quarterback. He uh, was taken down by Nick Fairley just a few moments ago, injured his right wrist and uh, was replaced by Jordan Jefferson. Jarrett Lee walked into the locker room just a moment ago in obvious pain. He had hit six of eight. Modest uh, yardage. Jefferson three of seven with one interception. LSU needs seven yards for a 50 yard field goal. Of course they take a touchdown, but they need seven yards. Jefferson chased, fires it, man, wide open. Oh. Tolliver drops it. Oh, my. Did he grab it, though, right before it hit the ground? Well, the official says no. Very strong signal yes. that it was incomplete. Oh, you can't do any better than this. This is maybe Jordan Jefferson said, I'm not getting any help. Couple of my fault, but that one wasn't. Yep, that bounced off the ground, no doubt about it. Holy cow. Gee. Third and 16. Jefferson running free. He's got a first down now at the 23-yard line. Now he needs to clock it. Let's see if that LSU bench is awake right here now. 106 to go. Or call a play quickly. They are out of timeouts. Clock stops while they line up. Remember that. Oh, very good job. They're ready to go. Look at that. There's the snap. Three receivers out. Pass is complete. Really the offense's advantage when they hurry up after a first down like that. Tolliver makes the catch. Look at how much more prepared. There you are, ready, ready to go. Three wide right, one to the left. Here's Jefferson, high snap, controls it behind the receiver, but Murphy makes the catch. Richard Murphy, number 18, and a little jawboning going on. Josh Bynes. Now, Tolliver had the big drop, but remember, Terrence Tolliver also had the big fade catch against Florida. That's who they like to go to on that situation. Nick Fairley out of the game here, and Auburn takes a timeout. That's their second one left, 48 seconds to go. And when we come back to Jordan Hare, second down, seven. I thought that was a great timeout by Auburn. They were tired, and a lot of things were happening, and they wanted to regroup for these final two plays here. This is the 11th play of a drive that began after a missed 39-yard field goal. And Nick Fairley is gassed. Even a timeout didn't get him back on the field. He's still out. They're going press out there. Jefferson takes off and runs out of bounds just inside the five. And that stops the clock with 43 seconds to go. Well, so many people have second-guessed the two-quarterback LSU system. Frankly, they haven't been producing a lot of offense, but it has paid off for less miles in this football game. He has both quarterbacks ready, and he's got one goes down, and the other guy's doing the job right now. Third and one at the three. Have that field goal team ready if you're LSU. Blitz into the corner. Tolliver, no. There's a flag down. 
Nico Thorpe, I think, is the guy who held Tolliver's jersey on the play. They were waiting for bump and want run, weren't they, Brian? I thought they were going to go on third down. Excuse me, the down prior. But mm -hmm. they saw it on this one, and they went with it. Now it gets a little hairy here. 39 seconds. You got a call. Number 15 of the defense. The foul took place in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first half. Nico Thorpe grabs the jersey. That's an easy call. Had his hand on the ball, but it came way out before you. Got to call two plays in the huddle if you run it. If you're running it, you have to have two plays called. See the Verizon Red Zone stats. Ridley. Nothing. Nothing. Clock running with 34 seconds to go. Either going to clock it or he had another one ready. Jefferson looked like he was making a signal to clock it. Les Miles would seem to confirm that. And Auburn won't get off the pile, so the officials do a good job of stopping the clock. That's the way it goes. Now the ball marked for play. They're going to clock it here. There it is. Now you're in a position where you have to throw the ball or you're really rolling the dice. Les is looking, Les is looking at the clock and saying 19 seconds. He's got an easy time for a fade here. If he runs it, it's a gamble that they can get a field goal off. Third and goal. Everybody in tight. Now they split. Peterson goes wide to the left. And Jefferson now has Peterson coming Play across again. the line of scrimmage. Oh, they got it off. Oh, the missed tackle. Jefferson, touchdown. Devin Bates, number 25, had the tackle back at the 13. Had the tackle been made, the half would have ended. Remember, we talked about Jordan Jefferson. He had not let a touchdown drive since the first play of Tennessee. 19 seconds. The clock goes to zero in the ball. Now, that's the delay that the officials looking at the play clock and grabbing the flag. But right there, if that tackle's made, the half ends. And Bates is still down. There's the missed tackle. The way I understand the rule is it's not the clock like basketball. Okay. Okay. They don't in you don't put superimpose the play clock and the snap and say you didn't get it off like the red light comes out in basketball. When you and Rafter you're doing it, okay? <laughs> okay. I think it's a referee's call. Got it. That makes the play. Now Bates will trot off uh, unassisted. If he goes low here, of course, he's lunging on the play, and Russell goes through it. Excuse me. Jordan Jefferson. Jefferson goes right through it. But how about that lead drive after the injury to Jarrett Lee? It was a called pass play, but it could have been a sack, and I think they would not have got their field goal team out there in time. Jared Lee is back on the bench. Josh Jasper will try the extra point to tie this one up. Among the legendary games between these two, remember the missed extra point and a penalty call. And on the retry, they got it. 10-9 the final then. It's 10-10 here. All right. Auburn fans are saying, what about the play clock? The play clock, does it run down to zero before they snap the ball? Remember, the play has to be called by the back jug as a penalty. Clock goes to zero. The ball is not snapped yet. But it was not whistled. And the way I understand the rule is the play has to be called. There's time between when it hits zero and when the official throws the flag. I just explain them. I don't say whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me zero means zero. I, it certainly looked that way, didn't it? 
There's no time after zero, is there? The time is between one and zero, right? My, oh my. Well, it wouldn't be a Saturday in the SEC without. No, but it was a it was a brilliant drive. The key play of the drive. There was two of them really. The face mask, mm -hmm. and then the third and 15 scramble by Jordan Jefferson. And it all took place after a missed field goal, 78 yards and 14 plays, two and a half off the clock. Jefferson gets it after Devin Bates missed the tackle back at the 13-yard line. Here's Jasper Scrib kick. Picked up at the 30. Boy, how many times have we seen that kind of a play result in a fumble? Yeah, because he, yeah. he barely had it. Lutz and Kirkin picked it up. Lutz and Kirkin's a skilled player, though, you know, on that play. It's not right. an offensive lineman. Let's go back to the drive. This is the third and 15. Jordan Jefferson gets out and then gets 15 yards on the play. You can see how deep Josh Bynes was that time in the deep zone. Trying to protect against the deep throw and the scramble picks up the first down. First down 10, Auburn with nine seconds to go before the break. Newton will take a shot at the well, nobody opened downfield, so he flips it out. It's complete to Ontario McCaleb. One second to go, time called. And that's a gain of 17. They'll have one try for the end zone. Uh, Auburn will take a timeout in, in before this play. They just did. One second to go. 10-10 ball game. For this play, I saved this, Vern. It was in the Michigan State Notre Dame game, and the proper mechanics by the back judges to look for the play clock and throw the flag. There is a half second time in between. Here's Newton. Heaves it into the end zone. Ball is up, the ball is down, and the half has ended. Not without some talking points, however. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Les Miles. Thanks, Vern. Coach, Jarrett Lee had x-rays on his right wrist. They were ruled a sprain. Can you tell us if he'll be able to return in the second half? Uh, I'm told by him that he's fine. If he can't go, though, what will you miss with him being out? Well, I, uh, you know, I'm not really focused on what we're going to miss. I really enjoyed the drive that, uh, that um, Jefferson orchestrated in the back end, along with Lee, to drive down there and tie the game. How important was that in terms of momentum going into the half? Well, you know, 10-10 now is much different. Second halves, we're playing for victory. You mentioned just giving up 10 points. How is your defense able to hold them to just 10 points? Well, I, honestly, I think our defense needs to play better. I, I see some missed tackles. I think our defense is going to look at that half and say, no, we need to play better. Thanks a lot. Uh, Jarrett Lee went down when tackled by Nick Fairley. Jordan Jefferson came on. He had started the game and had the big scramble on third and 15 for first down. Then got the touchdown. That's the end of the half. It's 10-10 here. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. We welcome you back to Jordan Hare, campus of Auburn University, Auburn, Alabama, 87,451. They all paid. A few others probably uh, snuck in. And moments ago, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Coach, the key adjustments you had to make in the locker room at half. Well, obviously, we got to play better on defense when we have opportunities to make big plays. We had a tackle we could have made down here on that last drive. We didn't make that. We had a couple of interceptions that we've dropped. Quarterback contain is going to be huge in the second half for our defense. Offensively, we just got to keep plugging along, and good, good things will eventually happen. This team has proven they can win the close ones. It looks like this might go down to the wire. Did you remind them of that in the in the locker room? Oh, absolutely. We, we, we think every game is going to go down the wire. That's what we prepare for. We've been here before. We got 30 minutes of one of those old-fashioned great SEC games, so you got to hold on with both hands. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Back to you, Vern. All right. Thank you. Jared Lee back uh, on the sidelines. Tracy reporting as we went to break at the beginning of the half that it's a sprain, but that he is going to be able to go. And uh, LSU will get the ball 
to open this quarter. Ron Brooks to the left, Patrick Peterson to the right. And a fairly heavy breeze at the beginning of the afternoon, the beginning of the game, but it's uh, subsided considerably right now. Ten ten, LSU, Auburn, SEC West, both undefeated. Ron Brooks at the five, near side. He was on his way down when he was tackled. Now, at the end of the half, there was a bit of controversy involving the play clock. And everybody Gary. in the press box wanted to know about it too. Let's we put it in sync with our computers side by side as it hits zero. The ball is being snapped. So it was the correct call on the field. We were blocked from our view. There was no lag in time. He actually got the ball moving. So all the Auburn fans that were saying it shouldn't have counted were not accurate. Fumble Jefferson. This time he's tackled. Misses the direct snap and he's down at the 21. Antoine Carter was there. Well, this is the Wildcat with Russell Shepard going in motion, faking or giving on the speed sweep. And you can see it, the timing is important. And that snap is also huge. Loss of four, second down 14. Spencer Ware is in the backfield. So also is Michael Ford. Play action. Jefferson, nobody open. This is where he really can help his team. Craig Stevens makes the tackle. Third down. No, the spot's going to be a yard short. Fourth down. Nico Thorpe, number 15, makes the tackle. Well, that was good, solid defense by Auburn. They forced that throw in front of them, and they're going to force a punt and three and out on the first drive of the second half. Interesting, this game began with Auburn going three and out. And now LSU brings out Derek Helton, number 38. But, and, but, excuse me, Vern, sure. with less, it's three and who knows. <laughs> Quite true. Fourth and one. Oh, oh beauty. Beautiful punt. Derek Helton chases Carr all the way back inside the 10. The fair catch made at the nine, that is a... 56 yard Derek Hilton punt. Well, the most important trend for LSU is they never got let Cam Newton get going. You know, where the, the smile was bright and he's making guys miss tackles. Jordan Jefferson had that great last drive. Lee was six for eight until he injured his hand. He started that drive. So the two quarterback system work, and you can see the difference. First half to second half, this is a legitimate, one of the best defenses in college football, and they're corralling this Auburn offense so far. On first down, 10. Ontario McCaleb starts in motion. Play pick. Newton rolling out, lobs it up. Caught. That's Darvin Adams. That's his first catch today, and there's a flag down back at the 15. Yeah, I think this one's coming back. I think you're right. You can tell by the body language. Not many times you see Cam Newton without a smile, but he knew it was going to be holding. Coming across the field, Darvin Adams turned over to the safety and nice throw, but all for naught. An eligible player downfield, number 75. At the distance to the goal, we play first down. Yeah, I think it was Brandon Mosley. Yes. Didn't quite see that. I, I, you know, everybody, I think even the offensive line for Auburn, once Cam misses a tackle, he figures Cam's going to go. 
right in the middle right there. He comes to block and when he's downfield blocking on the linebacker there they, they just too easy of a call. Well that wiped out a 19 yard game. And off left side. Oh watch out. Michael Dyer all the way to the 35 yard line. See I worked all week. Ray Rice is who the guy he reminds me of. And just like this, Ray Rice used to run the ball at Rutgers. Great balance, short and stature on the play, but he runs right through him and then gets to the outside. Patrick Peterson does enough to get him to the sideline, but that's perfect balance, and that was just a power play. That's a gain of 29. LSU. McCaleb's hit right next to the quarterback, crouching down right there. See him? Play action. Got a man open, Darvin Adams. He's at the 50 and is out of bounds. Darvin Adams, second catch, but this one will count. It's good for 16 yard game. It's that sugar huddle. They come out really quickly. There was a corner blitz on the play, and Darvin Adams just went across the stadium, excuse me, across the field. Easy pitch and catch. And now over at the Auburn sideline, they've got the card system working. They see the uh, one player with uh, all kinds of numbers. Yeah, they, they got cards, colors, numbers, yep. signals, headsets. They got everything. Newton up the middle. No, I'm sorry. He goes right. Still loose. Oh, did he accelerate? How about oh, my that? goodness. Touchdown, Auburn. First of all, did he cross the goal line? His knee comes down, but the ball was stretched out on the play. It's called a touchdown. I'm sure it'll be reviewed. It's going to be very close. But when he saw Peterson, he accelerated on the 15-yard line, and that was a Heisman run if I've ever seen one. Here's Tom Ritter. Ben His Oldham is the replay official today. Incredible explosion, cutback, everything in one play. I, I think he's in position. <laughs> you think? <laughs> he's got a pretty good view of it. And remember, it's not where the ball hits the ground, it's where it breaks the plane. That plane goes all the way up to infinity. I, I don't know if it popped on TV the way it did in person. But when he saw Peterson come and he accelerated about the 15 yard line, it was incredible. So he's got the ball stretched out. That's not going to show any difference. That is not that won't be overturned. Now look at the uh, mechanics of the official perfect position. Yep. After further review, the ruling on the field stands touchdown. Uh, and, and it should be. That should be a highlight reel for all time. And he's doing it against one of the best defenses in college football. Well, he's had a, a below average day now. He's only rushed for 127 yards. And that's his ninth run of over 20 yards this year. In 2007, when Tim Tebow won the Heisman, he only had four runs of over 20 yards all year. All right, let's just settle back and watch a young man who is fulfilling his athletic potential. Uh, 6'6", 250, ladies and gentlemen. Watch him accelerate, right? No! Oh my gosh. Leads. Well, the applause has continued for Cameron Newton, College Park, Georgia. 
playing in his eighth game for the Auburn Titans. A brilliant 49-yard touchdown run. And Auburn's up 17-10. That was something. Yeah. I haven't seen much like that. You know, I, I, I was quoted this week saying my jaw dropped when I saw Michael Vick, Tim Tebow, Vince Young, but this guy makes my jaw drop. Here is the kick. Taken by Peterson. Peterson near side. Oh, he is elusive. Just is stopped from behind. Tackle made by Chris Davis, number 11. You know, it's funny, Gary. Uh, Chuck Gardner, our statistician, has been with me for 15 years. Just reminded me, we did a Virginia Tech at Boston College game a decade ago. Michael Vick had an 82-yard run in that game. I thought that was the best. The one we just saw is the equal. Well, and, and Patrick Peterson, just to show you the level of athletes on this field, almost did a one topper right like that. So you can tell you have to have great athletes against these guys. It's not scheme. These athletes are changing college football. Jared Lee is back in there, sprained wrist and all. I asked for this, Vern, to watch it from the play-by-play -play cameras because I think you can see him accelerate. Watch him right about now. Did you see that burst? And he's going against a future top 10 pick there in Patrick Peterson, and he was accelerating away from him. Jared Lee missed the final sequence. Here's the handoff right side to Michael Ford. He's popped. Craig Stevens got him, number 46. Well, Craig Stevens, Josh Bynes don't come off the field. They're veterans. They've seen it all. And both of them are saying this is more fun than playing against Arkansas. Third and six. Lee back. Near side. Tipped away, good coverage. Chris Davis, who wanted offensive interference, called on Randall. And Tolliver was down there as well. This is about what I was calling for. Let's put some balls deep if you're the LSU offense. And you see Chris Davis, he ran right through him. Very seldom you're going to get that call because Randall was going for the ball as right at the end of that play, meet Mr. Fairley again. Totally unfair that a guy is that good. Fair. <laughs> but you got to throw some deep balls because you got to figure your athletes on offense is going to grab one of those sooner or later. Great, great coverage by Chris Davis. Quindarius Carr is back at the 10. Here's Helton, who's had a good afternoon, sends this one very high. And the fair catch is called. Oh, he let it go. Yep. This time he gets a break. Now that one was good fundamentals. Okay. He lined up at the 10. The ball went over his head. He let it go. And it will come out to the 20. 9.28 to go. Cam Newton, when we return. Well, Cam Newton told us last week, I am a throwing quarterback. He can also run pretty well. Now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, in the open burn, we had three different plays when he went through, around, and over Arkansas. Well, here he goes through, around, and then over the goal line. That, that was... You don't even have to stay up late and watch the, the show tonight. Right. <laughs> they'll, they'll spend half the night doing that play right there. We saved you some sleep. <laughs> Auburn leads at 17-10. Second three and out in succession for the LSU Tigers. Now Michael Dyer in the backfield. He gets the handoff and picks up uh, four, almost five yards. Well, Tim, I always like it when you're malleable. You know, you can shift with the tide. Here's Newton. 
fires it, put it low, incomplete. Good coverage from Morris Claiborne. Well, let's uh, take a look at a comparison of Cam Newton's season. Well, Newton for the year, 987 yards, rushing and 13 passing touchdowns. And about nine wow plays, which yes. you need a couple of if you're going to win. Well, this is... Uh, and, and having an eight and a zero on the team record also works pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. Third down five. LSU brings four. Newton across the middle. Oh, look at that. Just drilled it. Darvin Adams, first down, Auburn. I, I, I have kind of saved my evaluation of Cam until I've seen him practice twice and now watch him twice. People have been saying he's a great prospect for the NFL. I will say this. I think at this stage of his career, as we watch Auburn get ready to either snap it or fake snap it. <laughs> to be continued. There's a quick clip. Just a little bit in front of Zachary, but... Uh, let him just perfectly. I mean, yes, he did. Yeah, he's learned to touch it. Here's what I will say at this stage of his career. He's a better pro prospect than Jamarcus Russell was Tim Tebow was. And I think the only guy I've seen in the SEC since I've been here that's superior or farther along was Matthew Stafford. He will definitely be drafted very high in the NFL. He's got a pro arm and he's obviously got some other tools, but he has the throwing motion to play at the next level. Of course, you, uh, I think you're beginning to get familiar with his story. It's first down and 10 now. Wonderful. The middle. Fumble. Yeah, fumble. fumble. Mary O'Fannon, who's had fumble problems, loses the ball, and LSU takes over. Well, this might have been the most important stop in this football game for this LSU defense. They were on their heels. A fumble coming from the side that time. Was it Ryan Baker or Stefan Francois? I don't know who got his hand on it from the side, but there was a tackle. Ryan Baker. Yeah, I think it was Ryan Baker. That's what I thought. Coming from the side, Ryan Baker. And that changes everything. Everything seemed to be going Auburn's way. All of a sudden, a turnover can change it. Beautiful view from a couple of thousand feet up and aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS he is provided by MetLife. Mario Fannin with the fumble. And I would uh, expect feeling a little lonely right now. Yeah, he had to go talk to his offensive coordinator. I think he said, like, don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. It's one of those things that happen. I'm fine. That's what I think he said. I don't know for sure. Hey, three, two straight three and outs for Auburn. Can they do it again? And let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, this banged up Auburn defense just got a little thinner. Starting linebacker, sophomore Darren Bates hurt his shoulder at the end of the second quarter. He is out for the game. All right. Thank you, Trey. Second down and 10. No gain last play. 7.40 to go. Third quarter. 17-10. Auburn. That's got Jonathan Evans, number 35, is in there replacing him. One of the great special teams players for Auburn. Jefferson fakes it, goes right into the secondary well. Uh, Gary, delivers a little Cam Newton of his own. Yeah, Gary Croton was right. But he said, what I like about what, rest, oh, excuse me, what Jordan Jefferson gives us is great downhill running from our Wildcat. And he is a difference with that running attack. But now both scrambling on passes, but on that design play right there. There's Evans on in place of Bates. Quick count. Jefferson. Rolls out to his right, one hopper at the feet of Ruben Randall. Second down. And 10. All this stuff that's been going Auburn's way. It's 17-10. Right. Just relax if you're LSU. Ridley goes right. Gets by the first wave and then is tackled after a two-yard game. Josh Bynes, number 17. Led the tackling group. Now here's that key third down play where Auburn has, remember the last time they brought extra players, they said four-man rush, but they brought six. Well, they bring six again. They need about five yards, Vern, for a field goal. LSU's been quite good on third down conversion, six of 11 so far. They need eight right here. 
Three down, they bring six. Jefferson, right side, incomplete. Same look, didn't they? Ted Roof remembered the same thing we did. Last time I brought six, it worked. This time I bring six again and forced an early throw. Watch the middle linebacker, Josh Bynes. He had almost a clean shot, yes. yes. Well designed, wasn't it? How he looped around, he let the defensive end come down and looped around behind him. This is in between. Do you go for it? Do you punt? I don't think you can kick a field goal this far. Uh, be your basic. They've already done the flip. They can't do the fake field goal. No, that's and, right. And Auburn's going to st stay in defense safe. Okay, so Quindarius Carr is back at the 10. Now, a whistle. Little delay again. Not a big delay again. No, in not this situation. at all. What will Gene, Gene Chiswick do? Will he take the five yards or will he force him to punt there? He's going to decline this. Delay game. Number 30 on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. See, this is where you got to know your opponent. He's trying to tempt Les to go for it. He's, just, he's going to say, Les, it's only eight yards. You can well, do it. Here's he's, Josh Jasper. Okay. Yeah. But I got my defense safe in there. So let's see what happens. Remember last week, Josh yes. Jasper? He faked it and ran for the first down. I yeah. would assume Auburn saw that tape. Yeah, this is, a, this is a punt instead of a field goal, a little different. Right. Oh! Oh! oh. Wow! And Truck just told us that he faked the punt last week, too. That is right. I do remember that now. That was perfect, though, wasn't it? Ron Brooks. 36 yard punt. Needless to say, no return. Be right back. 6.18 to go, third quarter in this one. And for the second time in the ballgame, Auburn has forced, uh, has been forced to start a drive inside their own five. Here's Cameron Newton. Ryan Pugh, the center, snaps it back. Not much there that time. Greg Nevis, number 92, was uh, down low. Well, we talked about it before, how Auburn gets the plays. There's cards, there's numbers, there's coaches, there's letters. B-52, that's got to be the bomb, doesn't it, the B-52 <laughs> play? Yeah. Let's see. If there's every, any symmetry to this, he's going deep. Oh, good defense. Yes, it was. Oh, wow. Forward progress is going to be marked at the one. Right, to Ron Matthew, number 14. The crowd is reacting that the forward progress was about at the five. Well, let's look again. That's what Gene Chizis could say in two. Six yard line, he gets hit and knocked backwards. And then really never gets his momentum going again. That, that was a strange call. They're going to look at it again. Yeah, that's a yeah, strange review call. It. That's reviewable. There's the catch. Yep. There's the contact. And he's out well across the five. Yeah, he never regathers himself again. And then he gets hit before he gets to turn up. I think they may bring this ball back out to the six yard line. Gene Chizik was right out on the field as fast as he could. All right, here's the catch and the contact. One foot down, two feet down. Yeah, I, I thought one of the linesmen spotted it, and then the other linesman re re overruled it and said it's down to the one. So. I'm sure they have some pecking order out there that I'm not aware of, right? <laughs> you are a rules guru. No, no, I read them. I don't remember. <laughs> In this league, you got to study the rules. <laughs> Believe me. It's a long off season for me. Here's Tom Ritter. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Third down. Well, what do 
I know. Silence from it, the booth. You know what it is? Here's, here's the main thing on the replay. It's an opinion. Yeah. I mean, he gets hit. He feels. I feel he's lost his momentum. He had his forward progress way up there. Cody Burns never gets turned around, but the opinion of the replay official was the ruling on the field count. Newton. Now big, he gets out to the six. It'll be a big call. Down. Big yes. call because third down, no matter how good Cam Newton is, he's not going to pick that one up. And now LSU will have great field position because number seven is going to be back there. Number seven, as in Patrick Peterson, who has returned two punts for touchdowns this season. Stephen Clark, who is a true freshman, is on to punt. Peterson runs up, grabs it at the 42, out of the tackle, block in the back, no flag. Oh, yeah, the flag is low. Field judge saw that. And so this is going to go, I'm sure, against LSU. It was such an unnecessary block by Spencer Ware. Number 16 is the guy, I think, that got the, the block there. It was 10 yards behind the play, just so unnecessary to do it, too. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 16, receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, he did not get his head. That, that's unnecessary and really cost big field position. Now, Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. The athlete is Zach Clayton from Auburn, graduated in the spring. With a major in business finance, he's pursuing a second degree. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Auburn University's General Scholarship Fund. Jared Lee is the quarterback for the day. Seven of ten sat out the last series of the first half with a sprained wrist. Was given uh, the OK to go. And he's back in there. Rolling right, being chased. Pulls up, has to throw it away. Michael Goggins was chasing him. Late in the second quarter, this was Nick Fairley who got to Jared Lee. So Jordan Jefferson came on. Finished off that drive, but he started off well, but Jordan really showed his scrambling on that drive really paid off. And then shaking that tackle down there was also the difference between no points and seven points. Russell Shepard top of the screen wide right. Second and ten. Fumble. And Lee falls on it. That's the second fumbled snap. One by Jordan Jefferson in the shotgun, and now a fumbled snap by Jared Lee under center. The first one killed the drive. This one might kill the drive, because it's third and long. D.J. Lonergan is the center. Lee fell on it. Three wide receivers to the right. Let's see if uh, Ted Roof brings the house this time. He brings him, and it's a shack if not the house. Passes deep. Incomplete, fourth down. Well, you had to know, if you're Jared Lee on that play, you don't need the coach to tell you they're coming with the blitz. They've done it the two previous third down plays, and you've got to get back there with your clock in your head and get rid of that football. Jared Lee waited too long on the play, and he had no throw. So Auburn defense has really stood up. Look, at Auburn defense has done a great job, but the punting game has kept LSU in the game, yeah. as the graphic showed you. This is the third LSU three and out on four possessions in this half. Here's Helton. And it's another outstanding punt. Beautiful play. It's the ball, right? Down at the one. Ron Brooks caught the last one, and this time his athletic ability down there as the gunner, he made a wonderful play. He goes one way, the bounce goes away from him, and watch him turn around and get it. There's Ron Brooks. Now watch him turn, keep his balance, and then whack it away. Now remember, 
if the ball breaks the plane, even in the air, it's a touchback. Can't tell. Not from that angle. Didn't look like it did to me. I didn't think so. But again, this field position. Well, this Auburn team won the special teams battle last week against Arkansas. But the, uh oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Cam Newton. Out to the 10, second and one. Yeah, he was so patient again, waiting for the play. This was just like a power play to the outside. He reads the block, waits, waits, waits. And now near hash, second down. Auburn likes to go very quickly in this situation. I don't think he wanted to give it. Now well, we've uh, spent a little time with Cam Newton in the last couple of weeks. Look at the smile. That's what it reminded me of. Hmm. They're about the same size too. I hate to say it. <laughs> You're right. Well, Magic's a little taller. A little bit. And a little wider, especially now. Now, but that personality yep. is about the same. Third and one. There's Newton. That was the Wildcat, too. Yeah. Two offensive tackles to the other opposite side. They went on balance line, and Cam Newton, like Tim Tebow, is a first down machine on second and third and short. So here's the two tackles together side by side. That's the Wildcat. Coming around Mike Berry, you just follow your offensive guard. That's the Wildcat. And it's a first down 10 at the 14 yard line. 17-10 Auburn, final 140 third quarter. LSU is not coming up near the line of scrimmage. They're keeping their safeties back, forcing the long drive. Sweep, right side, Dyer. Turns his legs, gets close to the first down, marker at the 24. Greg Lawson, number six, made the tackle. Well, Vern, the two great backs coming out recruited this year were Marcus Lattimore at South Carolina and, of course, Michael Dyer right here. They both are great young football players. I like them both, but this Dyer's stature is great. And they'll try him again for the first down, and they get the first down, plus three or four yards. How about that? Well, that will get the crowd fired up. Those legs, I mean, they're so thick. Look at those calves. Those are strong, strong Ray Rice NFL legs. I got the name down. I got to use it. It took me a week. <laughs> well, you were searching last week. Right. I remember that. It's first down. Well, if it's working, why not go back to it? And, you know, almost the, the, the previous play, as you watch, this Auburn team and Michael Dyer, a true freshman, get they just push and push and push. And everybody, there's 10 guys. This is a scrum. This is a Australian rules foot rugby right here, isn't it? I mean, even even Newton's in there pushing on the play. Right. That's going to do it for three. They'll let the clock expire. The battle of the unbeatens at Jordan Hare Stadium. And as we go to the fourth, the Auburn Tigers lead the LSU Tigers by seven. That's the student section. Cam Newton is out in front of the group. We'll return to Jordan Hare right after this word from your local station. We welcome you back to Jordan Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. We begin the fourth with Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, Vern Lundquist. It's second down seven at the Auburn 36. Left side, Ontario McKayla about to the 41 yard line. As the Auburn Tigers, they've been pushed inside their five three times now uh, in, in the ball game, and they've managed to get out, but 
They've been losing field position, yet still lead 17. Yeah, they have one, what, a 91-yard drive, and right. now they got another one right here. When you're starting to run maybe for the fourth straight game, they're approaching 300 yards rushing for right. the fourth straight game. This LSU defense, they've been giving up 86 yards a game. They're doing it against one of the best in football. No. Oh, my. Stiff arm. Well, he lost yardage, but it's still worth a look. This Calvin is, Shepard got him. This is about the, one of the best minus 10 yard runs I've ever seen. <laughs> First of all, great rush up front by that LSU defense. They just kept coming and they never gave enough space for Cam Newton, even Cam Newton to get started. That was a stop that this LSU defense needed. They've had four drives. They only have one first down LSU in the second half. They need it coming up. Now Stephen Clark. Poor punt. Really poor. Taken by Peterson at the 32. Hauled down by DeMond Washington. Thirteen twenty-nine to go. This was Cam Newton losing yardage. Time call. Here's the story of the game. We talked so much about Auburn's offense, but it's been their defense in the second half. You look at it right there, and look at the great field position that LSU had, and here they have it again. Can Auburn stop them again? It's Jefferson, handoff right side. Ridley down to the 40-yard line. Craig Stevens makes the tackle. Well, Ridley had 28 carries against Florida, and I really believe he's one of those backs that he needs the ball more to get lathered up and run. Very stocky, very strong. We talked about that he's not a home run hitter, but nine-yard ball carriers on first down are worth their weight in gold. Could it be a play where they might want to go deep? LSU has not gotten any big plays in this football game. Second down one. Shepard alongside Jefferson. Play fake, Jefferson. First down. Talking about big plays, I was reading this stat about the LSU offense. Even with their great wide receivers, they have thrown the ball for passes. They've tried attempted more than 10 yards. They're 33% for the year. They are not completing the long balls, and only one of those all year have been for a touchdown. No long ball threats. Spencer Ware is in the backfield. It's a lateral. Oh, yeah, and there's Randall downfield. He's open, and he makes the catch. LSU touchdown. Spencer Ware is a high school quarterback. They needed a big play, Vern. They found a big play. Finally able to capitalize on that outstanding field position. Their offense had looked like a, a dance group. One, two, three, kick on the first four possessions. But now Spencer Ware finds Reuben Randall. And Josh Jasper with a chance to tie this one up. Derek Hilton will hold. Joey Crapel snaps it back. We are tied at 17. Well, we kind of set it up. LSU needed a big play throw, and they haven't had any, so they come up with a different way to do it. Watch the first thing. Make sure it's a lateral. Quarterback lets go of it. Yes, that's a lateral. His foot's there. Spencer Ware, a high school quarterback and a fullback, lets it go slightly underthrown, but Ruben Randall does a good job and makes the play. Does he sell it? That's Josh Bynes, the middle linebacker, covering the wide receiver. Spencer Ware, Les Miles, 17 all. 
285,000 here at Jordan Hare. A battle of the unbeatens. And we are tied with 12.16 to go. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by MetLife. Jasper will kick off. Remember we talked about it, Vern, would it be the two weaker parts of these two teams, which would give? Would it be LSU's offense versus the weak part of Auburn's defense and secondary? It's been ebbing and flowing back and forth. Well, you just have the sense that that negative field position for Auburn and the great field position right. for LSU was at some point going to pay dividends. Well, that weak part of LSU is the deep pass the game. The weak part of Auburn is giving up the deep pass. Right. Well, we are uh, early in the fourth quarter. Now, this is up to date. The point differential for LSU, 26 points, Auburn 41. Look at the yardage and the turnover difference. Well, and then just think about LSU. Their last two wins against Tennessee and Florida were on the last play of the game. Right. Okay. And Auburn's had, what, three games where they won right at the end of the football game. Both of these teams are used to playing close fourth quarter games, just like Gene Chizik told Tracy. It's an SEC game. There's Newton. Side spin, okay, tackle. Carnell Hatcher hung on number 37, and Dyer's uh, limping a little bit as he gets up. Yeah, that's that, that bruised knee coming around the outside. Just follow the big fella by Ramisum that time. Michael Dyer with 13 carries, 95 yards now. Now they look over, and the cards are flashed. Now the cards up. Newton keeps it a yard short of the first down. It'll be third down. One of the hidden strengths of this football game, or, or advantages we might say for LSU, is they had a fall break from school. So their defensive staff, they did not have to follow the 20 hour rule. It's very difficult to get ready for this spread on a short week of four or five days of practice. They had extra hours because they weren't in class and the defense should be ready for what they're seeing. And that's LSU that had the break and here is Cam Newton on third and one. Look at him delay and then find the opening and he's got a first down. Is this is this system complicated, Gary? The system of communication? I, I don't think so. I, I think once you, it's kind of like baseball signals. You know, there's a there's a key there that you have to follow. I mean, if baseball players can get signals, anybody. Can get, <laughs> okay. So, but you got numbers and colors. There's a code there that simplifies it. It's hard for the other team to figure it out. Levingston is the uh, injured player. Pep Levingston, number 95 for LSU. And they've all also, you know, they've already lost Sam Montgomery, their other defensive end. That's so right. They need to keep Levingston healthy. I know he's a defensive tackle, but he's one of those fast guys up front. Now testing his left ankle. Time has been taken. 10.55 to go. Fourth quarter. There's Levingston favoring that left ankle as he uh, walked over to the bench. Josh Downs, number 77, takes his place. First down, 10. Newton still has it going right. Gets a great block. Oh, he gets another one. Amazing. Oh, he got two really fine blocks. Eric Smith, number 32, with the first. This is just a power sweep. When you look at this, everybody I've talked to said the hardest thing about Auburn is they're running conventional plays from an unconventional offense. You can see you get a block from Eric Smith. You get a block up front. I think was it Mike Berry, Vern? It was Mike Berry and then Emory yes. Blake at the end of it all. And here's Dyer going right and finding nothing. Dyer on the carry. Well, it took him all of eight games. And uh, number two has become the all-time leading running quarterback in a single season. And LSU gives up, Vern. Let's just highlight this again. The proud LSU defense gives up 86 yards rushing a game. Auburn is at 313 yards rushing, the fourth SEC game in a row. I'm going to repeat that. 313 yards. Here's Newton. Add to the total. He's down to the 35-yard line. Ryan Baker makes the stop. Yeah, just by his shoelace that time. And Cameron Newton is over 175 yards 
again. Yeah, and, and that's including the one sack when he lost 10 yards. Remember, they take sacks and put them in the rushing yards in college. Third and two. Just look at that. They run the ball 72% of the time, the most in the SEC. And Caleb in motion. Here's Newton. Got it. Flag. Watch out for this. There's the flag on the play. Wipe it out. Gene Chiswick, Gus Malzahn. Tom Ritter. Holding number 75 offense, 10 yard penalty, replay third down. I think he was holding uh, Drake Nevis on the play too. Mm -hmm. Of course, Brandon Mosley is playing because A.J. Green, the original starting offensive tackle, was injured. It's on the top of your screen. They were in the Wildcat that time, and yes, he grabbed Nevis as Nevis tried to spin off the block. Wipe out the first down, make it third down and 12. And the ball is back at the 47-yard line. John Chavis has been known. He likes to blitz third and long. He says in passing situations, he loves to bring pressure. Let's see if he does it. Up the middle they go. Mario Fannin, number 27, but that will be a fourth down coming up. We talked about the communication. It goes on all the way to the snap. Guts Malzahn's calling the plays. Everybody out there can look at the numbers. And are they going to go for it? Fourth down. Well, I, do, I will tell you this, Vern. Be careful. I've seen Cam Newton pooch pump. All right. From the 40, it's fourth and six. Newton looks over. Oh, he's going to punt it. I'm I think so, you. too, yes. He's going to punt it. Play clock at five. Motion. No, he got back. No flag. Oh, he is going to throw it. Near side. Incomplete. Wow. Well, there's your basic roll of the dice. Wow. They brought the two wings in that time. I thought for sure they were going to pump that ball. And again, that means great field position for LSU. See, they bring the two wings in right, oops, right there and right there to the top. That's bad circling, isn't it? I thought for sure we were going to get the pooch punt one-on-one -on -one and not an accurate throw that time. He had him to the outside. Ooh, it was easier when I was coaching Springdale High School. <laughs> From the 40 after the failed pass on fourth and six. I think LSU has been having trouble pass blocking with Jared Lee in the game. That's why they're going with Jordan Jefferson. Handoff, big play defensively. Ridley stopped by who else? Nick Fairley. He's two defensive tackles, but I'll tell you, Nick Fairley doesn't have to take a backseat to anyone in college football. This guy is a monster. He just throws away T-Bob Bear on the play. Just tosses him into the backfield. Well, he led the SEC coming into the game in tackles for loss. There's another. Here's Jefferson back, left side. Great throw. Oh, yes. Yeah, good throw. Set up the third and about six, huh? Catch is made by D'Angelo Peterson. D'Angelo came to LSU as a wide receiver. They're running the option out there, and Jordan Jefferson sticks it in. Third and six. Got him again! Ooh. Nick Fairley! Nick Fairley guessed the snap count on this one and got off to a running start. P.J. Lanahan says, he jumped early. He runs right through the double team that time. And then throws him down. I'm telling you, college football has to get a handle on these defensive tackles throwing the quarterbacks down. 
Three sacks for Fairley today. Here's Derek Hilton. And again, he gets a favorable bounce. My incredible. gracious. Incredible. What a day Derek Hilton has had. That's a 55-yard punt. Earlier, he had one of 56. 17 all here. 6-10 to go. Newton. Carnell Hatcher, he gets by him. Patrick Peterson makes the tackle. And Newton didn't go out of bounds there. Now, I think this is going to look to SEC fans a lot like the Kentucky drive when they did 19 plays, remember, and they kicked the field goal to win the game in Kentucky, but also a little bit like Mark Ingram when he did the Wildcat all the way down the field against South Carolina last year. It's going to be hard to take the ball out of the hands of Cam Newton here in the run game. Newton has now gained 192 yards. He does hand it off to Dyer here. So the little change of pace, he gets out to the 30-yard line. Right now, Auburn would love first downs and clock. First downs and clock, just like they did it against Kentucky. Gene Chizik says, let's just take clock and first downs. Lutzenkirchen has to hurry to get off the field. He does. It's second down. Here's Newton. Handoff sweep, left side. Ontario McKayla. He's got some room, and he's got some speed. Touchdown, Auburn, 70 yards. West Byram for the extra point. McCaleb had a 99-yard kickoff return last week. That's his fourth touchdown rushing this season. And by 20 yards, his longest run of the year. Well, they, they took 19 plays to kick a winning field goal against Kentucky. This one took him three points. And remember, this is a lead play. The quarterback, Cam Newton, can either keep it or give it. That time he said, I think I'll give it. Looks like I got a touchdown. 24-17 after that 70-yard run. Ontario McKayla. rushing well 417 but I don't want to be too precise 500 yards total offense on a team that's been given up 200 yards in change all year my old buddy your good friend Dan Fouts graduated from Oregon I got word from him last night that the Oregon Ducks nobody was close right <laughs> Dan's in Denver getting ready to do a game out there Dan that run was for you Still a lot of time. Oh, my gosh. And this is less miles than LSU. Patrick Peterson at the two. Nope. Second one got there. Revisit the touchdown, Gary. Now, remember, this is a read. Cam Newton is reading the guy right here, and the question is, can the guard come and hook? When he sees he can get the guard, Byron Isom on the hook, he hands it off. But look at the blocking downfield. Wide receiver right there, Emery Blake. Number two, Cody Burns. Number three, Terrell Zachary. All three wide receivers get their blocks. First down at the 26. Jarrett Lee is in a quarterback. He comes near side. Randall at the 29. No, they're going to give him forward progress to the 31. 
DeMond Washington number 14 with the stop. Well this is the drives when Jaron Lee has really captured Les Miles and the LSU fans. When he gets the ball out of his hands quickly, he's been able to produce these late drives for LSU. Look at the graphic. 15 fourth quarter or overtime comeback wins with that man as the head coach. It's second and five. Ridley. Third down. Nick Fairley made the play. And he thought he was held on the play. Watch number 90, Nick Fairley. They can't block him. Here he is right here. Watch him on the play. Runs through it, gets a hand on it, and then gets up and said, I was held. What a football game he is having. Third and six. 345 remaining. This battle of the undefeateds. Randall in motion. Lee under center. Across the middle. Caught. He dropped, dropped it. He oh, dropped, dropped it. it. He dropped it. Well, they're going to say incomplete now. Yes. Now remember, LSU has three timeouts. They can still punt it and get the ball back. Now take a look at the end of the play. Terrence Tolliver would have had to make a great catch, but that's about the fourth one that he had and dropped, and it was bang, bang. I think he kind of had it, but he didn't have it and come down and make a play with it. Craig Stevens hit him. Les Miles wants a timeout. Oh, now he's about committed himself now. With the timeout, he's now committed that he's going to go for it on fourth down. Well, it's not like we haven't seen Les Miles beat the clock. How about the fifth, fourth down? One of the great games I've ever seen. LSU and Florida, they went for it five times, got every one of them. But that was just the start, Gary. This one, I thought it was a great time. This wasn't at all a gamble. There was plenty of time on the clock. I think it was actually three seconds, not one second. <laughs> Time expired at Ole Miss last year, memorable. And uh, Jordan Jefferson spiked the ball because he thought he had a timeout. And then this year, of course, they get an extra play because Tennessee had 13 men on the field. That was a mess. And then Terrence Tolliver, just a couple of weeks back, this game winner with six seconds remaining. I'm a little surprised, I have to say. You've got a sound defense, three timeouts. Les decided he's going to draw the line in the sand right now and go for it on fourth down. Tolliver, they need him on the other side. And the play clock could become, no, no, 20 seconds. They left. only had 10 men on the field. Russell Shepard just ran in. And now Tolliver's going to leave. This is chaotic. Now he stays. He's an inbounds on the near side, far side. Lee, fourth down. Not going to get it. I got to tell you, that was a mess. That was a mess. That was a mess after a timeout. We're going to have to add another picture to that story you just told. First of all, they only have 10 men. You can see at the top of the screen right here, they tell Russell, they tell Russell Shepard to get on the field. Then they switch Tolliver to the other side. He thinks he's going off. No, no stay, stay on the field. Then they put a guy in motion, and it's nothing. They got nothing. He looks left. Doesn't have anybody good coverage downfield. There's no way that Jared Lee's going to pick up the first down with his legs. So on first down, Newton will keep it. Dives inside the 25 to the 22. He's closing in on a 200. Yeah, he's got a 200-yard rushing day. Cameron Newton, 24 for 201. Time has been called by LSU. That is their second. Let's take a look at the kind of day he's had. 
First of all, he starts it over by showing how strong he is by running over somebody. Then in one of the most brilliant plays you'll ever see, he accelerates into the end zone for a touchdown. This is one of the great minus nine yard runs you'll see in college football. And then he waits, he waits, and patiently picks his spot and picks up the first down. So for the day, 200 yards, a career high. And Michael Dyer, as you mentioned, he's gone over 100 also. And one more time, versus LSU. On your right, that's his dad, Cecil, and his mom, Jackie. They live in College Park, Maryland. Second down, two. Cam's dad is a uh, Pentecostal minister. Second down and two. First down. There's the smile. Well, the pace of the game was the way LSU wanted it. The yards, the rush yards, is nothing they ever dreamed could happen to them. I'm, just, I'm looking up at the, the stats on the board. It's staggering. 428 rushing yards. The Look Auburn people told us they have a plan in case somebody goes after Gus Smalls on. They better start going over their plan. <laughs> on first down. Good tackle. Oh, he didn't have no, a ball. <laughs> Pretty good fake. Hey, I thought Dyer had the ball that time. It was a good tackle, actually, by Brandon Taylor. Calvin Shepard thinks for sure that Dyer has the ball. Nope, he doesn't. Cam comes outside. And as you said, good tackle in the secondary that time because I thought Cam was going to get another five to eight yards there. Timeout taken by LSU. That's their last. Well, Nick Fairley. This guy, Cam Newton is the star, but this guy stole the stage today because a team that gave up 566 yards a week ago came into this game and challenged their defensive line, and number 90 just put on a show. Six tackles, two and a half sacks. He shared one of them. Here's Newton. He's just... Uh, Trying to get that clock to wind down now. Well, both coaches here. chose to go for it on fourth and five or six. Neither with uh, effective results. That's true. Third down. LSU can bring this clock even without a first down to about a minute in the game. And then, of course, you can kick a field goal if you're Auburn to put it away. if they want to and I don't see why they wouldn't they've got a, a veteran field goal kicker that could just ice it here's the Wildcat two tackles to the top of the screen both of them over here third and six Newton Dang. first and goal ball game Director Jay Jacobs signed Gene Chiswick, and then Gene Chiswick and his staff went and found Cam Newton. Pretty good formula. Curtis Looper is the running backs coach and recruiting coordinator, and it was in October that they decided to go after Cam Newton. They actually visited Blinn College looking at somebody else, and Looper called Chiswick and said, hey, we got to get this guy. And so they recruited him. He wound up turning down Mississippi State. Whoops. Josh Downs. That might even be construed as a cheap shot. Now let's remember here, though, LSU, it's not over for them. They have a bye week coming right. up, and then Alabama coming to their place in two weeks. Red ball. Red ball. Offside. Red ball. Defense. Red ball. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Five signal. LSU, one of the bye before they play Alabama teams coming up on November 6th. Alabama controls their own destiny, obviously. Right. So does Auburn. 
Auburn plays at Alabama the Friday after Thanksgiving. A lot can happen between now and then. There's a knee. So Cam Newton's going to wind up with 217 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. He also threw for 86 yards. And now he's going to celebrate at the north end. Well, this sounds uh, maybe contradictory when we're talking about Cam Newton. I believe he's going to get a lot of player of the game votes. But the key, you can argue pretty thoroughly, vividly, was Nick Fairley, who had the game of his life at defensive tackle. The Chick-fil-A player of the game. Cam Newton, you get it every week. We got to share this. Hey, is it fun around here or what? Oh my gosh. Final score 24 17 coming next. The Jeep post game show for Tracy Wolfson. Gary Danielson, I'm Vern Lundquist. Auburn wins it. We'll see you next week from Jacksonville.